Now, uh, final I guess, question. You, uh, it's something I really like uh, to talk about. It's the, the simulation argument or hypothesis. So you, you wrote uh, about this topic a little bit. Um, are we living in a simulation, <laughs> according to you? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I think, the, um, I think there are uh, surprisingly plausible arguments that we should be taking that possibility seriously and, and, and more seriously than um, just to kind of, what if, like, you know, in some sense you could be like, ah, like, are we brains and vats? Are we, you know, was the world created five minutes ago with the appearance of age? And it's sort of like, who can know? But like, I think, I think there are stronger arguments for, for taking seriously that, that we might be in a simulation. And basically the idea is that, um, you know, if it's cheap, if it's sufficiently cheap to create for an advanced civilization to create, um, uh, civil simulations of people who who appear to be living in in the kind of the early history of some civilization, and there are sort of you know, and some of them choose to do it, uh, then it just it looks plausible that most people um, in in worlds like that who appear to be living in the early in the early history of a civilization would be simulations, um, and so uh, we we are like that, uh, and so you know, in, if that, if we knew that that was the situation that most people who, who uh, are living in the early history of their civilization are, or who appear to be living in the early history of, of some civilization are, are um, Sims, then by default, we should think that we're, we're probably Sims unless we have some, some extra evidence um, uh, to show, to show that we're not. And I, and I don't really think, think that we do have that evidence. So, um, so at, at, at the very least, I think you, you sort of, the, the basic structure of, of either it's not the case that most people like us are Sims um, or we're probably Sims. I think that that looks like a pretty strong argument. And then, and then we have to, we have to, to argue about, well, okay, so what's the probability that, that most people like us are Sims. But the, the, the issue is that it sort of looks like on our basic, on our current kind of picture of how things go in terms of like, how cheap is it to run Sims? You know, we're currently making, we're currently, you know, there's just a paper paper like last month, you know, they put they put these AI systems in a little simulation and had them like throw it throw a, a a birthday party and stuff like that. And you know, we're going to be doing a lot more of that. So we're going to have we're going to be literally seeing soon just like tons of agents that are going to be in simulations. Um, we already have like video games and stuff, but it's going to be smarter agents. Um, you know, agents who are at a certain point will be capable of wondering whether they're in simulations. Um, and so so this is just going to be a thing um, in our world. Uh, and so and and then if you, if you sort of do some rough calculations and you think that advanced civilizations are going to be quite powerful and and, and going to have like really really quite a lot of computational power available and that and you think well are there is there any reason you could ever run a simulation or you know an idiosyncratic dictator in some in some advanced civilization could do it or you know maybe it's for science or, or entertainment or you know to to learn about things you know it starts to seem like uh, just a pretty live empirical possibility if if the world the actual the sort of basement world is at all like. Uh, the world that we sort of see around us, um, that s simulations are just a possible a possible thing that you can do. Now, you could say, well, maybe maybe the, the basement universe isn't like the the, the world we see around us. Um, but now that's a little weird too. Now and it's like, well, why isn't then? How did that happen? Are we are we in a sim? I mean, so so there, there's this like somewhat comp there's a little bit of, of of complication in the standard sim argument where you sort of you you often will work with some empirical premises about how computers work and, and the computational capa capacity available to advanced civilizations, then people are like, well, we're in a sim. Then how do you know that that stuff is true about the basement? Um, and you're like, well, if we're in a sim, we don't necessarily, but then we're in a sim. Um, and so, so like, that's, that's another, that's bad too. So it's sort of like either, um, either our, our kind of empirical picture reflects the basement, in which case it looks plausible that most people like us are sims, in which case it looks plausible that we're sims or our empirical picture doesn't reflect the basement, in which case, well, it also looks plausible that, I don't know, at least something weird is going on. Maybe we're Sims, maybe it's some other kind of like pretty weird situation. Um, so that's like the rough argument. And I take it, I take it pretty seriously. I think it's, it's a further question from that rough argument to what is the like actual probability we should put on being in a Sim, which is different. Um, but I think like that basic line of reasoning is, is reason to take it seriously. Yeah, that's very interesting. And I wonder how we will update this probability of being in a sim once we create convincing simulation ourselves where the inhabitants of the simulation think they are in a sim. That will be like a point where we think, okay, well, if we did it, maybe we're already in one or, and you know, like this is a pretty strong uh, 
evidence, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think, but I think we should update now. Like, I think, I think it's it's very predictable that we're going to do this in the future, um, unless we like really decide not to. Now, I think, unfortunately, even if we really decide not to, I think um, the argument will still hold that if you if there's lots of civilizations, some of them might decide to do it. So even if sort of we wouldn't, if if we had been basement people, we wouldn't have run Zims. Um, there's if you have enough shots, then you know maybe like. Uh, maybe nine out of ten civilizations don't decide to run Sims, and then nine out of ten, or nine in the ten, uh, maybe nine out of ten civilizations go extinct, and nine out of ten of the ones who don't go extinct don't run Sims. But if that last guy runs a thousand Sims, then actually most of the um, the people, the basement people, are still Sims. So so it, it it could get actually somewhat robust if if the if the person if enough if Sims are cheap enough to make up for lots of civilizations deciding not to do it you can still end up kind of most people like us being sims um even if we don't if even if we didn't run sims but as soon as we start running sims it is it does start to feel like ah yeah it's a little bit like the the fermi paradox where uh, some solutions sometimes it's oh maybe there is a like a confederations and they all decide not to contact humans but you just need one civilization one one rogue alien even faction that would send probes and we will we will see them so it, it just need one and is the same for simulators um, that's right i think it's actually quite similar to that dynamic um and so you need you need a source of intense correlation if you have a lot of a lot of shots then in order to to kind of cut down on anyone doing it then you need really intense correlation across them and it's not it's not clear how you'd get that especially if they're um if they're kind of not causally interacting so if it's a sufficiently big universe they can't even reach each other um, and it's also in some way linked to the most important century, I think, because if we happen to live in one of the most important century of our species, then it will make sense to for our uh, the, uh, the, the yeah the future generations to simulate this period just to study it as a historical yeah to just know what happened and uh, how did we manage to align AI <laughs> or this kind of thing. I don't know. I think I think there is some intuition, and many people have the intuition that that living in the most important century or that's something about uh you know the sorts of ai we see around us and and our particular particulars of our of our current situation beyond just seeming early at all is additional evidence that that we live in a sim um i've written a little bit about this i think that that argument is actually quite a bit harder to make work than the the kind of basic argument i sketched before and you have to bring in a bunch of kind of additionally controversial assumptions in philosophy um, I think there are ways you can try to run it, but I think it actually is is trickier than than people's intuitive. Like I think people do like a lot of updating. It's like they, they cause, I mean, a way of putting why it's not that why it's sort of surprising is that in some sense being early at all is quite a special thing. Even if it wasn't the most important century, it was it was just like say say it was you know last century, <laughs> um, or the century before that, or even you know back you know ancient Egypt or something like that. Um, uh, that's still like a really radically weird time to live in the history of your civilization. Most of the people um, won't be at that time uh, by, by default. So there's some, some question about, about what exactly is the, is the thing you're supposed to be learning from being proximal to AI or, or living in the most important century or something, something like that. Um, or similarly, I think questions arise. People, people are like, ah, like I'm Elon Musk or I'm Donald Trump. And should, should, should it be some big update if you're, if you, if you wake up and you're Elon Musk that you're, um, that you're in a sim. And I think that argument is, is maybe, but I think it's like, um, and there's people feel very drawn to that. They're like, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm Elon Musk. That's so wild. Um, but, uh, in some sense being early at all is a way bigger wildness. Like Elon Musk always oh, like, whatever, he's the richest person out of 8 billion people or whatever, but being like the earliest out of 10 to the 50 people or something, you know, being in the, in the, <laughs> the top, you know, 10 to the 40 early, that's like a way bigger, uh, surprise in some sense than, than being Elon relative to the present day world. But people kind of don't think in that way. And so that, they think Elon, the Elon update is stronger.